I'd never watched The Crown. I still haven't seen The Crown series 1 and 2 and so many people have been telling me you've got to watch The Crown before the new series comes out and I thought yeah I will and then I didn't. But then Olivia Colman and Helena Bottom Carter come along in The Crown series 3, two of my favourite people ever, I kind of had to watch the third series. So I will discuss certain aspects that I really enjoyed about The Crown series 3 but I will also be answering the question can you watch series 3 without having watched the previous two? The short answer to that is yes you can because it's historical you kind of, well first of all you don't really need to know what happens in the first two because this deals with um, mid 60s to mid 70s, very different time period Elizabeth's life as Queen is, is different, Britain is very different um, yes probably if I watched the first two series I'd get more out of the character development and the way the Queen's kind of own story has developed but you can watch it on its own. The other big question is did I like it and we're going to save that answer to the end of the video. So as I said this deals with uh, Queen Elizabeth II in I think 64 to 76 or 77 and the episodes span across that time period and the problems she faces but obviously because they're problems that the Queen faces they're problems that Britain faces as a whole and the United Kingdom and as such we're watching our history now I obviously was not alive at that time and there are a lot of things that I don't really know about or if I know about them I don't really know how they affected people in general but watching this brings that history to life so as a Briton that's something that I actually really appreciate because it's kind of plugging gaps in my knowledge and gaps in my emotions. It was emotional. I feel like as a drama it was it was going to be quite heavy at certain times but it's also very funny as well. Margaret, Margaret's character is very emotional and she goes on a very, you know, we can see her kind of emotions ebbing and flowing a lot on her journey but she's also hilarious and I can't think of anybody better than HBC to have played her in this role. She, she does it fantastically. She is a joker, she does provide, I don't want to say comic relief because that's not kind of the right feeling for it but I think after a, quite a heavy scene she does kind of lighten it up a bit but also she provides kind of a lot of heavy emotion as well herself so she's a very complex character and I guess it kind of feels wrong to call her a character. I'm going to be 100% honest, if it wasn't for the cast I still wouldn't watch this and there are reasons why I wouldn't have watched this which I will explain at the end whether or not, uh, when I answer whether or not I enjoyed it but obviously Helena Bonham Carter, uh, you know, she's a permanent part of my life. I love her, I had to watch it. Olivia Colman is one of my favourite people ever and oh my goodness, I mean I've already said HBC was great as Margaret but what Colman does as the Queen is just I mean, let's face it, Olivia Colman is probably the most hailed British actress at the moment. She is phenomenal and she looks the part, she sounds the part, she really gives off what I would perceive to be the correct energy for the Queen. Brilliant. And also Jason Watkins is in this, which I wasn't actually aware of, I don't think, before I started watching it. And, and he's brilliant and, and really owns his role. The soundtrack is lovely. We have quite a bit of Helena Bonham Carter singing and um, which gives us some of Margaret's more lively characters uh, I love those scenes a lot we also have a rendition of God Saves the Queen which just fills me with so much British pride uh, I am a royalist needless to say really really nice soundtrack so it seems to be ticking all the right boxes but what really sets this apart from everything else is the editing I rarely describe editing as perfect. This was perfect. There are so many soft transitions and gorgeous blends and just honestly it's the camera angles as well. Just the cinematography as a whole for the Crown Series 3 is nothing short of perfection. Everything seems to be going well for this. The big question is did I enjoy it? Yes I did. I just I wish it had been a film and my reason for that is because I basically never watch drama series. It's very hard for me to explain this without just waffling on and going into a load of really pointless detail but I don't ever watch TV dramas that are period dramas because I just find that my attention wanders and I get really bored. I might watch like a five part adaptation of a Jane Austen novel but I've never seen more than two episodes of Downton Abbey, I've never watched Call the Midwife, I know I should but it just, it, they don't capture my attention that much. This one, it, yeah it did capture my attention, it did captivate me and I did enjoy it. Yes, I would recommend it if you're into this kind of thing. Had Helena Bonham Carter and Olivia Coleman not been in it, I might have got 
two episodes in and then kind of stopped watching. But that's nothing to do with the show, that is purely because of what entertains me. Generally speaking though, this is a masterpiece for royalists. It's a fantastic way to become fully absorbed in British history. It's beautiful, it's spectacular and it's completely immersive.